Last week, I released a video, Top 10 Mods to Fix KSP2, and as always, with those style of videos, it was outdated about 3 seconds after I uploaded it. In this week's instalment, I'll be going over changes that have been made, especially regarding mod loaders, and also have a look at some new mods that have been released since then. Chances are next week, I'll have to do the same, as the first patch for KSP2 is due to release this Thursday. Oh well, gives me content, but I do feel I'm somewhat stepping on Kotobos' shoes doing a weekly mod showcase. Anyway, to the mods. Previously, I mentioned there were two different mod loaders available for Kerbal Space Program 2. That has now changed. As of last weekend, Space Warp is now a plugin for Bepin X. This is amazing, as having two conflicting mod loaders meant there were some mods unavailable if you decided upon one or the other. Now with just one, we can grab whatever we want and go absolutely cra- well, we can get all the mods. As mentioned in my previous video, because KSP2 currently has no official mod support, you will need to pick up a mod loader to install any of them. That is however now super simple. Head to the Space Warp GitHub page and download the Space Warp 0.4 plus Bepin X release. There will be a link in the description for this, as well as links to every other mod I mention in this video. Once downloaded, extract the zip folder into your KSP2 root directory. This is where the .exe to run KSP2 is located, and if you're on Steam, an easy way to locate this is to right click on the game in your Steam library, go to manage, and and select Browse Local Files. The directory brought up will be the one you want to extract the contents of Space Warp 2. Once Space Warp and Bepin X have been moved across, run the game once, and upon loading you should be greeted with an exciting new menu option, Mods. And with that, we can begin modding the game to make it better. This time round, rather than stating where each individual mod goes, I'll mention it at the start. When you download a mod, if the download contains a folder called BepinX, you need to drag that BepinX folder into your KSP2 root folder, as done previously to get Space Warp plus BepinX. However, if the download contains a folder that is the name of the mod you just downloaded, we're going to need to go a little deeper. If this is the case, you want to go into the BepinX folder, then into plugins, and this is where you place the mod. I've given examples on the screen if that was a little confusing, but hopefully you should get it from that. If you haven't already seen my previous video about KSP2 mods, I'd highly recommend checking it out, as there are several incredibly useful mods mentioned there that I won't be going over in this list. This set of mods is for new mods I've found, and some older ones that have had substantial updates that have dramatically improved since the last video. Stage Info, a mod I mentioned in the previous video, has had an update and added what I so desperately wanted from it, and even mentioned in the last video, the ability to change your vessel info per celestial body. Now you can totally plan out an EVA Sense stage entirely within the comforts of the VAB, and don't have to resort to napkin maths and multiple in-flight tests to ensure that you get the Delta V you so desperately need to get off the hellish surface of that purple monster. I covered basically everything else this mod offered in the last video, but a quick rundown. It tells you your thrust to weight per stage, your delta V, and when flying the vessel, it will also tell you the amount of fuel you have left to burn in seconds. All incredibly useful bits of information that I personally think should be in the base game, but at least for now, we have this mod to give us that. In order to access this mod, there is a button present on the toolbar, both in the VAB and in flight. Anyway, back to the VAB for the next mod, because this rocket is not exactly looking its best. Despite being spelled incorrectly, this mod is a great little addition that allows you to, well, do exactly as it says on the tin. Save colour presets. Did you paint your entire rocket already and realise that the first thing you painted would look nice also on the boosters? Well, if you saved a preset, you can quickly switch back to those colours and just plaster it wherever you want, rather than spending far too much time trying to get back to the exact same colour you originally had. As far as I'm aware, you can save as many colour presets as you want, and scroll through all of the different presets located at the bottom of the colour picker. There may be a limit, but after creating quite a few to check, I got bored and carried on giving my rocket the makeover it truly deserved. Very useful for the artists among you. Take a look at the poor Kerbals currently assigned to this mission. Those are some pretty weird names, right? Some of them don't even end in Kerman. What is this sorcery? Kerbals are all one big ins-
related somehow, but we won't delve any further into that. Well now with Kerbal Manager, you can name your Kerbals whatever you want. Yet another feature from Kerbal Space Program 1's cheat menu that was lacking from this game. I'm fairly sure we now have near enough the entire functionality of that back with the mods I've already covered, which is certainly nice. So if you want to send your dog, your mother, your dog and mother, or your favourite KSP YouTuber on one of your death traps, then this is the mod for you. Please just don't repeatedly kill me. Makes it kind of hard to carry on making these videos. Kerbinaut Manager should automatically open whenever you open the Kerbal Manager, but there is also a custom button for it in the toolbar too. One last thing, a very teensy tiny minor bug I've encountered is if you name a Kerbal without Kerman as their last name, their profile will appear blank whilst in the VAB. But not to worry, because as soon as you get out to launch them, they will be a fully fleshed out Kerbal, and not just a grey square. Since my last video, Better Parts Manager has improved dramatically with new features, bug fixes, and well, yeah, what else could you want other than new features and bug fixes? To summarize the mod, it brings back the old part action window from Kerbal Space Program 1, so you can right click on any part and bring up just that part without several seconds of delay as the game tries to load the entire craft using Parts Manager. Having played around with it a bit more, some of the problems I was running into last time round have been fixed, such as you can now change the amount of fuel present in fuel tanks, see the amount of fuel left in each tank in flight, you can adjust many more settings than previously, and on top of this there are constant updates coming. In fact, over the course of me starting out scripting this and getting the finished video out, there have been three updates to the mod that I can count. Shadow Dev is certainly putting the time in here and has been really helpful keeping me up to date with all of the updates. There are still some parts that are missing some functionality, and it still can be a little buggy at times, maybe not allowing you to to select certain parts, but it has drastically improved upon what it was. But my point here being, Shadow Dev has now found a way to keep the old parts manager in whilst this mod is active. So even if better parts manager is being a little finicky at times, we still have the old system to do whatever we need it for. You'll obviously have to go make a cuppa or something whilst you wait for the parts manager to open after selecting it, but that's not exactly the end of the world. In order to open the parts manager, all you need to do is click on the button on the toolbar, as right clicking on the parts will no longer do this as that will just bring up the parts window instead. Seriously, this mod is an excellent addition and I eagerly await future updates. If you don't like the look of Better Parts Manager or you want a guaranteed way of not accidentally bringing up Parts Manager, then this mod is for you. I'm currently running both mods and they seem to work fine together. All this mod does is create a different way of accessing the in-game's part manager. The default keybind for this is alt right click and is useful if you're faffing around in the VAB dragging with right click to get a better look at the abomination you're currently working on as it means you will no longer accidentally bring up the parts manager. Wonderful. With Better Parts Manager installed, the way to access the stock parts manager is as mentioned before. Just click on the button on the toolbar to bring it up. I have noticed it can be a little sticky, so a couple of clicks might be needed at times. Gone is the era of manual flying. Now is the time for automation, with Suicide Burn being the first mod that will somewhat automatically fly your rocket for you. This mod, I won't lie, got me incredibly excited. Being somewhat of a MechJeb fan, I was super stoked to see some of its functionality returning in Kerbal Space Program 2. What this mod does, if you didn't guess, is land your rockets for you. There are a few values you can change in the settings, so this isn't fully automatic, and these values will change depending on the rocket you are flying, but it certainly is a start towards automating some of the flight processes in Kerbal Space Program 2. To access the mod, once again it can be found within the app bar while in flight, and as far as I know, is the first button to contain a little bit of colour. Nice. But yes, some testing and note taking of values to input may be required, as the first time I attempted to use this mod, well, yeah. Luckily, there is this neat little mod that will allow you to take notes while in game and keep them per save. Kerbal Notebook, also from Shadow Dev, man, do they ever take a break? Is useful for storing all sorts of information you'd want to keep on you while flying your vessels. Be that what settings you need for suicide burn, your shopping list for the week, or your opinions on the bourgeoisie. Once again, this mod is accessed through, you guessed it, the app bar. Word of warning whilst using this mod. See that little button that says input block? If you ever want to type something into Kerbal Notebook, make sure that is red. If it is green, then you will still have full control over your craft, which can lead to some interesting 
writing happenings. Like me, accidentally staging my entire rocket on the pad whilst I was trying to write a short story about dolphins. Notes are saved per save file in the game, and you can actually create notes outside of the game and import them by dragging them to the save file in the notes folder in the notebook folder within Bepinex plugins. That was a mouthful. Just make sure it's in .note format and it should appear when you open the notebook in game. Community Fixes is a collection of mods that, well, fix some of the problems within the game. Currently, it adds the Sticky Orbit Marker mod that I mentioned in my previous mod video, a fix for Comnet not working when separating stages, as well as another couple of fixes which you can find more info on on the link provided in the description. You can also configure this mod and enable or disable whichever fix you want from the mod menu on the start screen. These fixes are likely to come in a future game patch anyway, but it's nice that the community has got us covered for now. And I believe the mod authors are working on implementing further fixes down the line, so also another mod to definitely keep an eye on. As of right now, this mod only adds one little feature, but it plans on adding much, much more customization to the UI within KSP2. Currently, all you can do is this. But as stated on the mod's information on Spacedock, this mod is not to replace the UI, but to extend the features of what is already present and provide flexibility to players by allowing them to customize the UI to their liking. But yeah, right now we can do this. Which I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, but definitely one to keep an eye on for future updates. This mod is a simple quality of life feature. All it does is tell you your current phase angle and the ideal phase angle for an interplanetary departure. Just select the planet you want to go to as your target, and this mod will provide a button that lets you time warp to the optimal time to leave. Very simple, yet very useful in order to maximize efficiency when traveling beyond Kerbin's sphere of influence. No button to bring this up, it should just automatically appear when you enter the map screen. Probably saving the best until last, this mod is huge. This mod is essentially Kerbal Operating System from Kerbal Space Program 1, a mod that lets you write scripts to fly your own rockets. But you say, Kanasa, I'm not a hacker man. I can't write scripts to save my life. What use is this mod to me? Well, I'll tell you. The mod comes with some pre-built scripts for you to use, and they are some awesome scripts indeed. The thumbnail for this video, Mechjeb in KSP2. Yeah, this is the mod that does that. Obviously, we had Suicide Burn earlier that provides some land Landing functionality, but this provides ascent guidance, maneuver node execution, circularization execution, all at the click of a button. And you know, it's pretty accurate at performing those maneuvers too. Ascent guidance may need a little bit of work, but at least there was an attempt. And you know, if you are Hackerman, you can write your own scripts. You could do all sorts of autopilot functionality with this mod, such as landing, better ascent profiles, performing an entirely automated flight to Juna, you name it, with this and a bit of coding skill, you can absolutely do that. I even like that you have a similar window to KOS from KSP1 to tell you exactly what the mod is currently doing. Doing. Makes me feel home. Full documentation is available online if you do fancy writing your own scripts, and a rudimentary syntax checker is already available for Visual Studio Code, so you can see exactly where you're going wrong when attempting to write scripts to use. Scripts can be located and saved within Control System 2 slash TO2 folder within your BepinX plugins folder, and yeah, honestly, I'm blown away by this. This is insane that we have mods like this for KSP2 already. Honestly, I think the modding scene for this game is very bright indeed, with stuff like this already coming out and I'm super excited to see what comes next. Anyway, back to the mod. In order to open it, once again, there'll be a button on the toolbar to access it. From here, you can open up the fancy display and press all the buttons to make your rocket do automated things. Very cool indeed. One final thing about Control System 2. Even if you can't code, it's highly likely that there will be people out there writing scripts for this that then share them publicly. This is of course not guaranteed, but it was absolutely something that happened with Kerbal Operating System for KSP1, and I don't see why this would be any different. It it might require a bit of digging, and of course it's early days for the mod yet, so not much will be available. But give it a bit, and I'm sure we'll start seeing boost back and landing programs exactly like we did for KOS. These updates certainly do make the game, in my opinion, a lot better, and more fun to play. And with the first patch right around the corner, who knows, maybe we'll see some vast improvements very soon. That being said, as the first patch is coming, it may break some of these, so this is a warning that these might not all work as intended for very long. The game is early access after all, and we 
will be getting constant updates, both for the game and the mods too. Another exciting future prospect that seems like it's nearing completion is CCAN for KSP2. I've done a bit of digging and have found there is a pull request to add Kerbal Space Program 2 functionality to CCAN. If you don't know about CCAN, it was a fantastic repository for KSP1 that basically did all the hard parts of modding for you, and if it makes its way to the second game, I will be very happy indeed. As of now, I haven't found any parts mods or mods that provide additional features to the game. I'm sure they're coming, but right now, these fixes and quality of life improvements are certainly welcome. That being said, I did stumble across something called Sticks Arsenal. It's not released yet, but I have included a link to the mods discord in the description if you want to check out the progress or even help. But who wants to bet? How long will it be until we get BD Armory back? A big thanks to Mr. Blue Star, Pentium, So Not the Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.